Let's do a quick recap of what we did in the last section. We created a data type for the hotel and another one for our rooms. We added some fields and records to both of them. Today, we want to access these records to allow the user to select one of each. Select one hotel and select one room. And to do this, we will need to use data pages. I like to think of data pages as a bridge between a system of record and our Pega application. The data page can be used to fetch information and make it available in a case type. Let's take for example the hotel data type. When we created the hotel data type, Pega created three data pages, hotel, hotel list, and hotel savable. Hotel retrieves a single record. Hotel list retrieves multiple records and Hotel Savable updates an existing record. And the same is true for a room data type. So what are data pages in the big scheme of things? Well, they sit right in between a system of record and different parts of our application that need information. For example, our case type. So the first time we need information, our case type will trigger the data page and the data page will fetch information directly from a system of record and return it to our case type. Data pages improve performance by caching data. So if the same data is needed again, it can be retrieved from the data page instead of hitting the database each time. It ensures that the application works with the most up-to-date data and reduces the overhead of repeated database queries. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to use in a big list the data pages of type list that were created with the room and the hotel data type. So remember how we were using a local list for a room type? Let's change that to use a page list instead. So let's go to our case type. And it is in our second step here in select rooms. Let's click on configure view. And this is our big list field. So let's go to configure this. So here in the big list option, instead of local, I want to use data view, which really is data page here. Uh, one thing uh, here in local, you can see that we have four options and these are local options. We enter this manually. So instead of that, I want to use the list that is in our data page. So here we have to search for our uh, data page, which is on the room, is list room. And now it is asking us for these two fields, the identifier field and the display field. When I first started with Pega and I, I didn't understand this identifier field and display field, it's actually quite simple. So the identifier field is asking for what is the unique identifier for this property. And the display field is asking for what is, what is it going to be shown to the user? So I'm going to leave the identifier as the globally unique ID, which is the PYGUID. And the display field, I want to display the name of the room type. So if you remember the property, I think we call it a type. So let's see. Yeah, so here we have the max guests, the rate, the type, and, another, and other properties that are created along with this data type. So I want to choose type. And here, so once again, wh why we have these two, identifier field and display field. The reason is that the identifier field, whatever is here, is going to be stored in this room type property. So the value for room type is going to be equal to the globally unique ID 
for a room. But it will show to the user this value. So if this is single, it will be shown to the user single. Or if it's double, it's going to show double. So whatever we are storing in this value. So just keep that in mind that room type, even if it's a big list, in reality, Pega is treating it as a text field. So it will store only one value here. So I'm going to click Submit. Submit. And let's test this. So now, if we click in this big list, we can see that we have the same options. Actually, we have an extra option, which is the other. Remember how we had four at the beginning? We have this extra one because we added this in our database. So we can choose any of these ones. So now let's go to the hotel big list. So if we go back, uh, we have this text field. We are going to add a new one. We are going to add a new field here, which is going to be a big list. So let's go back to our reservation case type. And here in the first step, let's click configure. And here I'm going to add a new field. I'm going to call it select hotel and it's going to be of type big list. Now I'm going to change the display as instead of using a drop down, I'm going to choose for this one a search box. So this will allow us to search to write in this field and it will be searching for that information. The big list option, once again, instead of local, I'm going to use data page. And let's search for our data page. So it should be under hotel or hotel data type. And here we have this data page, which is list hotel. Once again, it is asking us for the identifier field and the display field. So if you remember with this data type, we specified that the identifier field is going to be the name. So that's okay here. And here in the display field, I'm going to choose the same one. So name. So I'm going to click submit. Submit. And let's test this. So something uh, I want to note right here that I forgot to mention is that when in the select hotel field, which is the big list, when we choose the autocomplete, the display as, as autocomplete or search box, which uh, for some reason it changed the, how it was displayed. But when we choose the search box, the identifier field and the display field, they must be the same because if they are not, then you will be getting an error. So I just wanted to edit this in and just let you know that if you are getting these issues, then you have to have both of these fields the same. And if not, then use the drop down. So here down below, we can see that we have this new big list, which is different because it allows us to write information. So if we start writing, we can see that we get some uh, we get some options that are in our database. So we have these three hotels. If we don't write anything and we uh, just leave it blank, we can see that we have all of our fields here. So I'm going to choose this one. Something that I want to fix right now is I'm going to remove this property and just leave select hotel. And I want to move this to the top. So I'm going to click on configure view. And here we can configure our view. So I want to move this one to be on the top. This hotel name I want to remove. So I'm going to click here in more options and click on delete. 
another thing that I want to do is to make this field a required field. So here I'm going to click on edit. And in require, I'm going to choose always. Let me click apply. And now we can exit here. So now we have this new view. So let's search for any hotel. So here in this last view, I'm also going to configure it because I don't want the hotel name. I want a new big list that we created to be displayed here. So I'm going to click configure view. And let's add that property. So it's called select room, select hotel. So I'm going to move it up top. I'm going to delete this one. And here we have it, but I want it to be read only. So let's configure that. So this is going to be under presentation. Edit options, read only, always. So let me apply these changes. And now here we have it. So this is pretty much it. Now we are able to have a dynamic list. If the information in the database gets updated, so will our pick lists. Something that you can notice here is that the room rate field seems to be broken, right? It says zero, even though we selected the single room type. So why isn't it working anymore? One very useful tool for debugging is the clipboard tool. In the next video, I will be giving a very basic introduction into the clipboard tool, and we will be debugging this together. So, see ya.